Hello everyone, I'm Professor Geek. Welcome back to the channel. I mentioned in a video, a few videos ago, I said I, maybe I should make another video on what it takes to play <clears throat> a hero these days and how actors don't consider that and actors certainly don't embody the, uh, or take seriously the responsibility they have when portraying these heroes. And uh, the ridiculous thing is that you've got even a lot of audiences today because people are so trained to uh, just not even believe in something like an aspirational hero or not even, you know, people are just such nihilists today that they're like, you don't have to be a hero in real life to play Superman. I hear this mistake or this uh, mistake uh, being made all the time when people try to defend Henry Cavill. You don't have, oh, it's just a part. You're just an actor, you know. If this was just a part and just a story and just a stupid movie or whatever, then you'd be right, but it's not. It's mythology. These characters are, are important to our society, to our culture, to our individual psychology, as I said. So it, it's just simply not that. You're wrong. You're flat out wrong. Um, when, it, when you talk about a, a actor embodying the hero and taking seriously the role they play, and what I mean by that, I don't mean... Uh, an actor pretending to actually be that character. Of course not. But you, you really just, the golden standard is Christopher Reeve. Uh, that's just, you can't get better than that. That man just embodied heroism. He didn't pretend to be Superman, but he recognized and he realized, okay, th I've, I've portrayed this incredibly important character on screen, this character that's very vital to, to our popular mythology. He understood that. He understood that people were going to look up to him, knowing that he's an actor, but still people were going to look up to him as the one portraying this role, especially because he portrayed Superman so perfectly, just really, you know, all of the, he, he had those values within him and they just really shone through. So he, he took that seriously and you never caught him uh, saying this or that or uh, being rude to fans. He was above... In a, in, a, in, certain, in a lot of ways, he was above politics. He, uh, he had his own specific pol political beliefs. Of course, he had his own sp pl specific religious beliefs. But he recognized that he was to be above that in his public persona. Of course, individuals, doesn't matter if they're an actor or whatever, have their own individual beliefs. They go into the voting booth and vote, you know, what they personally believe in. And uh, sure. But he realized that if he was going to be an actor, he had a certain public persona. And if he was going to go ahead and be the actor who portrays Superman, that's a specific responsibility. There are certain things that you can and can't do, you know, and he embodied that so well that even today, people are just in awe of him. There was, a, um, of course, when he received, you know, he had his injury and he was paralyzed, it just showed so much more heroism in how he dealt with that, you know, and really was an inspiration to, uh, to people with disabilities and whatnot as well. There's a website called capedwonder.com and I'll put a link to it in the description below but it's a friend of mine Jim Bowers who runs that and um, I say friend I met him uh, years ago when I was doing a podcast and he, and he was coming on as a Superman podcast and he was coming on as a guest and we you know sort of kept in touch since and he uh, he's got a great story he was able to get all these pictures and the rights to all these pictures from the actual productions you know that these pictures are going to be thrown away cast aside it was because of him really diligently um tracking all of these down that we have still all these wonderful records of those films and everything like that. And it was really great. And, and even of Christopher Reeves life, um, he even goes in and gets a lot of things from George Reeves and stuff like that in those days and whatnot as well. But, uh, capewonder.com shows a lot of those off and he, uh, you know, I'm uh, a member of a lot of the Facebook groups and whatnot that he started and stuff. And, and every now and then he'll just still be, you know, posting stuff in that from this movie or Superman four or this and that. And, Every now and then, uh, you know, I don't really think this, but it does, I do think, like, man, how can you consistently geek out that hard about one individual for that long? Not to say that I don't. I, you know, Superman's my guy, and Christopher Reeve is the Superman as far as I'm concerned. But, uh, but you know, I've also got a diversified, you know, group of heroes I look up to as well. Uh, but uh, I was, I was just like it. But, you know, if there's anybody that you could sit there and geek out that that consistently over it's Christopher Reeve because he just set that standard. He was just so amazing. Now I say all of that to get to this point. No, I'm not holding every actor who plays a superhero up to that Christopher Reeve level standard. That was the gold standard. I simply don't think people could do that. I, I no one could certainly do it in this day and age. I think if you tried to be that much above 
politics or religion or anything that just just that kind of a uh, you know mythological standard today i don't think hollywood would let you have your say they wouldn't give you the publicity they wouldn't you know hollywood's just a horrible different beast now but uh but that is the golden standard so where do you fall elsewhere let's just look at some other examples and then we'll look at the specific examples specifically ezra miller and chris evans the the two horrible examples from today uh so yeah you didn't see that thumbnail for nothing we are going to get to them but some other examples, you know, another actor who portrayed Superman, Brandon Ralph. Think what you want about Superman Returns. You know, I've done a lot of videos and talked about it. I think it was a masterfully made film, but it was the it was not a very good Superman story. You don't, you don't make certain choices it made for a Superman story, obviously. But Brandon Ralph was not a problem in that movie. Oh, man, he was just a wonderful, wonderful choice for Superman. He really embodied that. He took... He took on uh, the, what Christopher Reeve had started with the character, but then he didn't try to copy Reeve. He put his own spin on it as well. It was just, it was wonderful. And Ralph is somebody who has got that reputation too. He's always super nice to fans. Uh, and, you know, he's got his own political beliefs. I think he and his wife actually worked for the Obama campaign at some point or something like that. But he never melded his uh, his politics to his his having played Superman or having played Ray Palmer, you know, in the CW or whatever. He never joined those two and tried to make that a thing. I think this kind of idea of, of melding our um, public heroes or that public persona, melding it to one side of politics, really, I saw it anyway. Maybe you guys have seen it start earlier, but I didn't see it start until the Obama years. Now, you can like or dislike Obama all you want. This isn't about his politics. This is about the general overall public reception of him, which was frightening. It was zombie levels of Messiah worship. Terrifying. It really was terrifying. And it continues to be terrifying today. People get this glassy-eyed look when they reminisce of Obama. And again, like his politics, hate his politics, that's just a fact. Uh, it's nothing new. I mean, we were always given to hero worship, uh, you know, as human beings. And I think um, it was pretty bad with JFK, from what I understand. I mean, that was what Frank Herbert was kind of writing Dune as a reaction to in some ways. So, um, so yeah, it's, it happens as human beings. But in the Obama years, what I saw was people in the comic industry starting to go ahead and marry whatever characters they worked on or they were, you know, to their political views. Um, Alex Ross, the great Alex Ross, did this horrible, horrible painting of Obama in the exact same pose that he paints Superman in, and it was Obama ripping open his shirt, and there was the O instead of the S. Now, you can think that. You can you can love Obama like that all you want, but you don't, as, 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 a, as a caretaker of American folklore, as somebody like a famous comic book artist like Alex Ross is, you don't marry that level of access or responsibility you have taking care of the Superman folklore and marry that to any individual politician. I don't care what their platforms are, what their, their, these characters are to be above that. Uh, when Trump was talking about building the wall, people were sharing this, um, this meme or whatever of Superman just like slamming down into a wall because Superman was an immigrant and we're not going to take this. And the no, no, that's not proper use of superheroes. They are to be above our politics. Superman stands for truth, justice, and the American way. And it doesn't matter if a Republican or a Democrat or anybody is in office. That American way is what Americans should be aspiring to. It's not any one uh, executive office's foreign policy or domestic policy or anything like that. That's not what these characters are, are there to stand for. They're there to give us these standards above it. Yes, you can have characters in a different universe, in a different context, like an X-Men or something like that, you know, comment on civil rights and stuff like that. Uh, but even that's to be done sparingly and more on a metaphorical level, you know. The X-Men are, are discriminated against because they're mutants, not because they're of this race or of this political or um, um, sexual persuasion or whatever, you know. As soon as you kind of, you know, just level it down into the literal like that, you've removed all mythological resonance. You make yourself feel really good because I've made these characters say what I want to say and now they believe what I believe and they're preaching what I believe. But they, they've lost all resonance. They, they may talk to other people out there in that one cultural moment that believe what you believe. They're not going to convince anybody, and they're not going to have any resonance after your time. Whereas we can go back to the X-Men comics, you know, of the 60s right now and be wowed by how wonderfully resonant they still are because it's got that metaphorical, mythic resonance. That's how these characters work. So that's how actors who play these characters should be, should be thinking. Chris Evans, I'll use him first, and then we'll get into the to the Ezra Miller psycho thing. But Chris Evans, when he started playing Captain America, he seemed to get it. 
I remember interviews of him saying how amazing it was to to step into the shoes of a of a character like that who was just that good and that pure and really believed in this, these things and and practiced these values. And he was talking about how it made him want to be a better person. That's great. That's all great. Like it or not, Chris Evans, you are known as Captain America to a lot of people now. Yes, you've done different roles. Yes, you, you're going to do different roles. That's fine. But you are known as Captain America. There's a responsibility that comes with that. And I don't care if you're an individual person who has individual political beliefs and whatnot. You don't go on your public persona Twitter and call anybody who disagrees with you blankety blank or if you support this this political person bleepity bleep if you are against this political thing or social movement or whatever then you're a bleepity bleep this is common sense folks this should be common sense but you know the defenses are why you know, that that's his own twitter why can't he do that on his own twitter because he's no longer his own anything anymore he's decided to take on the role of captain america and once you do that once you agree to step in to play an important character like that, you have to abide by a certain set of rules. You, you are you are important to culture, and um, ultimately, I mean, I'll always love the stories that he played in the good movies of Captain America. But he's lost all resonance. He's lost all importance. You know, who cares? The character himself. He could come back and you know reprise his role as, as Steve Rogers uh, in a movie, and it wouldn't matter. Like who? There's no. I don't watch that and get, you know, wouldn't get any kind of inspiration from it anymore because he has made sure that Chris Evans, the man, the individual man with individual beliefs and individual uh, politics and whatever is now that's that's now subsumed uh, Captain America. I don't see Captain America anymore. Uh, if if, I, if he was to play that role again, I would just see Chris Evans because he's he's put that out in the front. You know, uh, the other problem with this is so you know that's what's seen as good and wholesome and true is a political viewpoint and it doesn't matter what political viewpoint that's wrong again these characters and the actors that portray them in terms of their public persona should be above politics they should honor their mythological role there but the other aspect of it is that because this this movement these values you know this virtue signaling is deemed okay you're in the club you get you get checked off you can come in and be one of hollywood's people now that's how we get to ezra miller all of these stories that are coming out about ezra miller people you should have known people that worked with him i mean there's there's stories about people trying to tamp these stories down Let, let's not let's not pay too much attention to that why because he was doing all the right virtue signaling he was talking about being non-binary he was all of the he was saying all the right things he was he was people's little poster child for their social agendas. So the people that worked with him were just turning a blind eye and ignoring all of this horrible stuff or the hints of it, you know, even if they didn't know the extent of it. And fans, fans that supported him, how many times were they going out of their way to just give him the benefit of the doubt? A video of him literally strangling a fan. That's not okay. Even the best way you could spin that, that's not okay. But people, oh, he's got the right virtue signal, so we just let it happen. And now, good enough for you, Warner Brothers. Good enough for you. I cannot be more pleased that you are in the, the bind that you are in, having spent all of this money on this movie, and now you've got the star, you know, still like a year out from it. it just, you know, good enough for you. You made that bet. Go lie in it. And I hope it costs you a millions of dollars. It's just, it's it's absurd. Because people don't understand heroes. They don't understand heroes on the page. They don't understand heroes on the screen, and they don't understand the importance of a real-life human being, an actor, who's going to take on the role of portraying that hero. If you do that, then then you step into some certain responsibilities, some certain uh, you know roles that you've got to play. Not pretending you're that hero, but you've got to you've got to stand up for certain things, and you've got to um, be above a lot of things. And if you don't want to do that, fine. Don't take on that role. Don't take on that role then. There was an image that was released of, uh, what's his name, the guy, who Tyler Hecklin or whatever. As soon as he started playing Superman on Supergirl, an image released backstage of him flipping off the camera. Dude, look at that S-shield on your chest. Shape up. Anyway, that's all I've got. I could caulk on and prattle on and, and go into more, but that's all I've got on that right now. It's a big topic. A lot more could be said. but And I'll say more in the future. But anyway, until next time, keep enjoying and digging deeper into the hero story. Thanks for watching.